Welcome back, everyone, to Game 2 of Proving Grounds Grand Finals between Team Liquid Academy and 100 Thieves Academy. And Team Liquid, after that Game 1, guys, looked on fire. They looked so good. And so now, Mark, we got to kind of put ourselves in the hands of these players. Think about what they're talking about behind the scenes. And honestly, I feel like a lot of that for 100 Thieves comes down to... Could we have just played better? Was that really just a hand stiff the entire time? I and mean, maybe they could get a grip on what's going on uh, <laughs> for game two and try and get themselves through that early game. But I think the game plan for Team Liquid Academy, they had so two good. best of fives to look at 100 Thieves, what they do, how they win games. I think the diagnosis for them is if they don't get ahead early, their mid games, that's where we can boom them. And that's exactly what Team Liquid Academy did in game one. And it couldn't have been much cleaner. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting things to look at is where all of our predictions were at the beginning of the day, right? We saw from the desk, we had two Team Liquid Believers and 200 Thieves Believers. I think up here, we're pretty unanimous on the fact that we are expecting Team Liquid to be our favorites for this series. Whether it's going to be a 3-0 or a 3-1 yeah. is going to be a big difference. We weren't expecting the silver scrapes, like, like you know, A was there. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were to be like all blue, like Yawn, right? Yeah. <laughs> all but it goes through. Oh boy, it's oh. been a while since we got this too. We got the liquid chance coming through in you got the it. crowd. Everybody's getting pumped up. Even our mayo's dealing with it. Oh <laughs> baby. Yeah, Harry is loving the enthusiasm, the cheers from the crowd. I love it too. I mean, we couldn't get a full audience in for these, but loving the support already coming in for what is going to be an absolute dynamite game too. Speaking of love and sports, I love Dale's game plan. Oh bad. dude. The bard was so good. The fact that like once team they could get ahead and take that first turret their ability to utilize the realm warps the magical journeys to just cheat tempo and continue to push the pace of that game forward I think that was a big difference in Game 1. We're going to have to see how 100 Thieves change things up in Game 2. It's something that we saw in Golden Guardian series against Team Liquid last week with me and Josh. I mean, once the Bard came in, there are so many attempts that Golden Guardians were trying to make against the bottom lane, and Ayla just said, Haha, I got a wall. I'm going to magical journey through this. You cannot attack this. Yeah, and while we saw our Mayo and Harry do a good job at attacking Jimmy early in the game, later on, it really is on Ayla to get anything started for the side of Team Liquid, right? He's their primary engage button. The Tempered Fate is the only way that they can get to somebody from really really far. Otherwise, they're just relying on picking somebody out with that root. And at this point, looking into game two, we have to preface this, guys. 400 Thieves, the past two best of fives. Game two is where things just go absolutely wild. <laughs> like, is there a way to exploit game twos that we've had so you far? You just have to watch it and see it <laughs> unfold at that point. We had a 60 kill, 51 minute game in the series against Immortals. And then we had a what was it, like a, a, a 6k gold deficit overcame? It was like a 27-minute Elder into 100 Thieves getting the second Elder and then just like winning the game out from there. I mean, the game too has just been electric. We'll see if that trend continues today. So we are about to hop into this champ select. They've both been big comebacks too, right? You already talking about it. This massive lead coming from Immortals, a huge lead for Golden Guardians with what most people were considering a better scaling composition. And so 100 Thieves, if they're going to pick up a game, this is the one that I'm favoring and partly for the memes, but most realistically, <laughs> because this is when Kenby looks at that last game and says, that was not okay. I was a team, a player that was supposed to get uh, LCS offers this year, and I'm still here. I got to prove I'm ready for the next level. And that, when we're looking through what the priorities are, talking behind the scenes. A lot of us said that, yeah, we're not expecting necessarily the bands to change, but in terms of the priority, Team Liquid can run back that Zeri, obviously, but I think the change will come through picking up the Viego the first time around for 100 Thieves. It's what they did against IMT. I, I think that it's just a champ that Armeo has been really solid at. Again, seven and three coming into this series now, eight and three on the champion throughout this season. Oh. But it seems like 100 Thieves, Maybe they want to run back at least the first three and then change things up as we move into the second phase of the draft. Maybe it's the Soul Landers. We're looking for a little bit more proactivity. It really felt like that was what was lacking from 100 Thieves early. And That's look, what we were talking about last time, right? I mean, as the Viego goes right on back to yeah. Armeo and the Bard gets picked up, we were asking, one, is Armeo going to be able to get this again or is it going to get taken away? And it is the exact same first half of the draft. And the place that I'm looking for a wrinkle is actually going to be our fourth pick for 100 Thieves. I was surprised they grabbed Victor there. Oh, look at this, an early Akali ban. Same. That usually- yeah, That's the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, hold on. One of the adaptations, it could be getting rid of that chase. Because yeah. I know that Bradley, he was the only member that dropped uh, or died in the last game, but I think the chase, how oppressive that poke was, and the fact that it just gave TL another priority lane, 
maybe they take that away instead of the Gangplank and then take that Gangplank for themselves. Exactly. Yeah, I was very surprised that it was 100 Thieves who are abandoning away the Gangplank because they had the opportunity to grab it for themselves. And as we've said, both of these top laners 100% win rate on that champion throughout Proving Grounds. Oh, okay. Sam, no exactly changes. Same. Josh, yep. this, this looks like Super Smash Brothers. This is a salty run back so far. <laughs> Where's the change going to happen? I don't know. Is Team Liquid going to try something different? I, I would be very surprised if we saw another victor come through for Jimmy, and not because he's bad at the champion, but because it's not something that they're often able to do early on in the game. And yet again, the exact same draft. I think we are on pace for a full salty oh. run back. Oh! Ah, ah. Not there we go. As the rise comes through, 400 thieves. It is going to be very different. We haven't necessarily been seeing as much of this in the proven grounds. So funny thing, uh, that last game for Jimian, he was 4-0 on the victor until he just dropped that game. His second most played in PG, 4-0 on the rise. So yeah. we'll see if TL can beat his other undefeated champ as they now have counterpick for a different mid laner. A little bit of an adaptation from Harry. It's the similar game plan, just a different mid lane matchup, TF Chase. But the big thing about this matchup is now we get to see both of them once again with great gank assist. And this is going to be enabling Kenby to come to the mid lane. You have what is effectively a point and click route coming out from Jimmy. And you have the gold card coming out from Harry. And so Armeo and Kenby, this is setting up 100 Thieves for a bit more early game success because they have an obvious lane to play through. And we saw last time in Armeo's first full clear. He went towards the mid lane trying to look for something on the Jimmy, but because he was on the victor, he was a little bit more defensive. They couldn't look for anything. I am expecting a 2v2 bloodbath in the early game. You know, as someone who did coach a collegiate team, I, I, I didn't coach at a high level, but I'd have to coach against Bradley. That was a big pain in the butt. But there are more ways uh, to change up your strategy throughout a best of series than just draft. Yeah. And this is something where we've seen 100 Thieves play throughout this tournament. This is a strategy that they've been able to win on, right? Take scaling picks and win early game. Make better plays early. I think one of the big differences from that game one was TL's ability to slow Kenby down with that ward, with how that level one went. I'm expecting that one of the big adaptations that comes out here, a very different level one from 100 Thieves. Yeah, I think yeah. the fact that Kenby was spotted early really hurt their chances, and I'm expecting a different level one here from 100. They all ran exactly down to the bottom lane, right? It left yep. the top side completely wide open. I think a simple fan doesn't solve all their problems in the early game, right? But it solves what I thought might have been the biggest one, which is Bradley's total control of the top lane. He was playing with perfect information, and as a top laner myself, if I know where the jungler is, I'm going to have a lot of fun. There's not going to be a lot of things that the Orn can do for level You get the rain up in your kingdom scot-free, right? I Bro. mean, there, there's no pressure from the junglers interfering in the glorious 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> it's Super Smash Brothers all over again, but as we get onto the Rift, it feels like it's going to be a lot of similarities for the first game in terms of overall draft. And so a lot of the win conditions that we saw last time are still true. And here's the five-man spread. So yeah. again, as you highlighted, Joshi, there's a five-man group bot trying to uh, pick out Yawn, get a summoner spell. This time, just a standard spread, trying to prevent that deep ward that spotted Kennedy for the entirety of the early game. As Hunter Thieves do make an adaptation, they're gonna try and hide Kennedy, who again, 71% first blood rate in this tournament. That is the highest in the entire tournament. He is the catalyst, he is the playmaker and the carry. And if he can get Hunter okay. Thieves off to a better start, I think that's going to be the big difference in this game as the drafts are similar. They're going to hope their play is different. Now for, for 100 Thieves Academy, they're a little grateful that the war doesn't go in the red buff side. So at least we'll cloak that side of the, the, the map. And Kenvi can always alter his path, go from red buff and then skip out on the Raptor camp. I'll hold up oh. now. Oh, this is interesting. Spot it again. We'll have to make sure he actually gets seen by this ward. There is a very small way that you can try oh, and grab spot. it. But we'll see. I mean, he's pulling it into the bush. This is going to be something where they have to pay attention. If they're not looking directly there, they don't know he's there. So I think this is something for Kendi. When we see him do the Raptor starts, it's two options. One, clear your top side camps and then try and impact the top lane early. Yeah. Or take Raptors, nice. wrap around to the bot side, and then work your way back to the top crab. At the moment, it seems like the earlier of the two options is he is clearing his three top lane camps and, again, is going to try and stop Bradley from this three-wave stack into dive. Meanwhile, Armeo, he is clearing towards the top side of the map off of these Raptors. He's going to make sure that he can protect oh, Bradley. Up. But Kenvi, going from Raptors, I imagine now that he's going to look for blue buff romp, gets level three. And one of the things that Wixie and Bustio were looking for, they were trying to all in Ayla and Yawn. They couldn't do it by themselves. If they bring Kenvi along, maybe that changes things. Kenvi wasn't spotted on the cross, but you can see Armeo, his path, that's the fastest path you can take to get level three, also the healthiest to impact the top side to Bradley. Actually crashed on two. Uh, so 
I think that he was actually scared that Kenby might be doing Krugs and coming here. You can see he already burned his trinket. So Hunter Thieves playing with information early. I, I think they're the ones where Team Liquid going to have to figure out where Kenby's at as he's sprinting his way towards bot. Yep. Boost here's already in the brush. This is where he's the most effective. Oh, it's so spotted. hard to dodge this. But it's a good ward from Ayla. Already sniffing out the play before it happens. This is what happens when Team Liquid wow. are able to operate with such great communication. Team Liquid. Oh, but Jimmy is here. Oh, Jimmy. And they're going to bring four members to this. They should know. They have to know that there's a possibility for a strong dive play. Watch for TPs. Kenby, they're revving it up. Cosmic Binding onto Wixie. Here comes the dive. And Yon oh, flashing wow. forward, forcing away Yon. the main damage of it. And 100 Thieves Academy were looking for this dive, but it gets completely thwarted. And now Busio's on the run. Still has both summoner spells dodging out on the binding. But just like that, Team Liquid read the play and make the anti play. But look at how much they're getting back on the far side of the map right there. Moving down. Oh, they want to challenge this 2v2. Oh, no. Oh, oh Armeo. Oh, this might be a one slip up here. 100 Thieves have forced the flash out. Harry is there with a gold card to prevent it. Ayla He's with the more. magical journey. They get the Cosmic Binding down. Jimin forced the flash over the wall, but our man doesn't have flash anymore. He cannot close the distance. Root is there, but isn't enough damage. Gold card. Yes, it is! Team Liquid again with first blood. And the early game plan is so good from Team Liquid. The second game in a row where they're scouting is the big difference. They spot out Kenvi. They make the better decisions. We move on, and their bot lane with the priority makes the play happen. It feels like Ayla once again. We saw that he was able to withstand the 2v2 and win it for you last time. This time, he's the one who's making the difference. He finds the stun with the Jimmy and even after the flash, allowing Team Liquid to catch up. And his first blood goes over to Team Liquid once again. I'm getting flashbacks, you guys, what we just saw. And this oh, guy coming in. Stopped. This is a huge wave stacked up. Gomsu still has flash, but he's half of his HP right now. Armeo, if he lands this root, this could be nice. Good flash from Gonsu. Dodges on some damage, but they're Good still trying drop. to make the dive work. Umbrittle damage is going to be enough. Huge knock on the two. Bradley gets the kill. Our mail, our mail will go down to the play. At least it's a trade one for one for 100 Thieves. Envy. We saw this exact same play. Abusio, they want to route out Ayla, but he has Magical Journey. He falls through the wall. Is it going to be enough damage? Jan is there to be able to fight back. Ayla still having Flash is still safe. 100 Thieves Academy. You see how much pressure oh, they're Ayla. trying to put onto this bot lane, but you cannot crack Jan and Ayla. The exact same plays happening yet again between game one and game two. We saw Kenny go for that exact same attack on Ayla last time with the exact same results. Ayla once again finding his way out of danger. And this bot lane, uh, they've been so good for the team ever since Hala, Ayla rejoined from the LCS. But the fact they have support counterfeit, it feels like that's been the big difference. This bard, I don't know if anyone else has played it in this tournament. Ayla's now 3-0 and oh on the champion. And it's what's enabling him to get to the plays first to make sure that Kenvi and Hunter Thieves cannot dive them bot. Of course, that TP from Harry helped. But still, this mm -hmm. bard, big impact in the TK matchup and Hunter Thieves opting for the matchup again. TL getting the best of it again. Big props goes over to Yawn and Ayla in the bot lane. And at this rate, it just seems like 100 Thieves Academy are on the same track to what we had in game one, where Team Liquid, they're getting through the early game. They're going to hit those level six power spikes where they have access to global tools, and they're going to be the ones that start undermining 100 Thieves. This is the 2v2 we were talking about. Both these guys have pointed click, but Harry's a little far forward with no flashes. This is a big window after the gold card is down. It doesn't look like 100 Thieves want to take, uh, take control of it because we know that Armeo's on the bottom side. I think that it's just the hover from each jungler is uh, now. He has gold card available, but no flash, but he's got destiny. <laughs> Can he get out? No, it's not in time. The Realm Warp is canceled and Team Liquid Academy continue propelling forward. I, I love the interaction, right? As soon as Armeo shows, Harry starts popping the hole. He's like, yeah, I know I can get to you. The Realm Warp is too slow. My channel is shorter. Lands the gold card, an easy pickup. And it's the right idea from Kenvi with the hover, but I think I think it really speaks to how each jungler is different. Uh, Kenvi goes back to farming his lanes. Armeo says, I'm going to wait the extra 10, 15 seconds. I know this play can work. The wave's pushing away, and that's what ends up catching him out. It just seems like we're getting almost a run back of game one. Thankfully for 100 Thieves, they haven't been shut out as long as they were in the first game. They were able to trade a kill back, but we talked about how the scaling advantages for Team Liquid is not going to be as matched by 100 Thieves in game one. We saw that it was a result of that. Hold and now on, Team Liquid, on, they're trying to build up to the first dragon of the game. <laughs> but <th> <laughs> what is terrain? <laughs> How are you supposed to lock down Ayla, man? This, this board is such a huge thorn for 100 Thieves. Oh, man, we saw this exact same thing, right? Their ability to navigate around the map is unparalleled this time around, but we got 30 seconds to Rift Herald. 
I Again, though, I think this is such a great read from Team Liquid on how 100 Thieves have gotten here. I think of all the games where Gamsu has been on the Gnar, the Gangplank, the Orn, where it's all about Kenvi attacking bot lane. When you have Bard plus uh, this Sari, you can cheat terrain, you can get out of these plays so easily, and 100 Thieves, they don't have another answer. And 100 Thieves, it just... I know they made this adaptation in the game too, pretty much making the draft pretty much the entire same except for this rise swap out but you can see how team liquid are so prepared they're so they've already thought out all the counter picks that 100 thieves have been looking for and now it just seems like 100 thieves they're going to be hoping for miracles in the mid game at this point they're also adjusting their early game too right we were talking a lot about how team liquid was going for the rift heralds early on but when you have this much control in the mid lane and your jungler is as powerful you don't have to give anything back even though it's just a dragon last time team liquid are making sure 100 thieves can do nothing and ayla already roaming up for an opportunity to interact mid lane this is spotted. Busio is here to hover. No alts for either of the supports. They don't expect any action, but as you mentioned earlier, Joshi, Rift Herald, it's now on the map, and part of that hover is the rotation. Harry, he has first move. Gamsu, take the fruit to heal himself, but see if we have a play. Whoa. Okay, well, call the Forge God. They're gonna go for it on the exit, but Kenvi cannot get in range okay. to punish. It's a big cooldown burn. It's a big cooldown burn, but it still gives 100 Thieves total control over the Rift Herald if they want to go for the Baz. They back away as Bradley comes back. It's so much harder for Gamsu to stay in the river when he needs to go grab this farm. And we'll see now if 100 Thieves decide to commit yeah. or if they look elsewhere. And you can see Busio, Jimmy, and both hovering. Jimmy, and he has the spell book, so right now he's on cleanse. There's no teleport. He's going to complete that base. He's like 100 Thieves, they're going to see the Herald. Armeo's on vision, but he sweeps it out, and Kenby just doesn't have the reinforcements do ready. Yeah, Jimmy and no teleport, no Realm Warp available, not in range to be able to support any type of counter engage. That Team Liquid, lane. this is... How do you deal with this? Where, where, where can 100 Thieves in this game find a breaking point to stop Team Liquid with this accelerated pace? I, I feel like, you know, Armeo as a jungler, uh, he, he's so controlled in his games. And, you know, the patience to wait out that play from Gamsu to wait for his lanes to have push and then go for it again. Kenvi just doesn't have the answer. And yet again, Kenvi, one of his only options, game. try and hover top. Maybe Armeo's here. Maybe they find a 2v2, but he's spotted. Bradley's letting him know he's spotted <laughs> as that shock blast whizzes right past his ear. And Kenvi, all he can do is hit recall, reset, and just TL. They'll be bleeding out 100 Thieves, 2k gold lead for them. I was expecting a lot of similar things, right? We we're looking at Wixie and Busio pushing the bot lane, but now they're getting oh, attacked. And look, both. this Cosmic Binding is going to set up. Oh, oh, okay, the timing, not a little too much. It's okay, we don't, we don't, you know, Jimmy's look back at those. Hold now, on. hold up, hold in 100 Thieves. They might have enough reinforcements, uh -oh. but then it's now a three on three. Harry flashing forward for the gold card. Busio still has the great health shield, so he is just fine, but 100 Thieves pushing back and too. forth, and now the junglers are coming in. It's about to be an all out brawl between four. We'll see if Jimmy and he does have flash. If anyone's going to be proactive, Jimmy and can set this up. Oh, flash from Armeo. Heartbreaker, that's the damage. And now he's a catfish. He's looking for the Abyssal Dive to follow up, but he goes down. Wixie is revving up the resets, and he's going to force Team Liquid back. I, I just love how much control Team Liquid have. As soon as they recognize the fight's not good anymore, they all just book it. And it's incredible testament to what we've been talking about all series long. This bar is doing so much work for Team Liquid, keeping them alive. I will say that's one of the first instances we've seen 100 Thieves contest them early, is now top, Bradley. Okay, gets a knock up. Where's the flash? Can he get the cla clap back in? Bradley oh, uh, no! holding it up. Oh, but Bradley waits it out and he gets out. That's crazy. That is crazy. I am the Jace player. I would flash there. I would not believe that I had enough HP, but Bradley got balls of steel. Not going to be going down to Gamsu. I mean, he still burned the flash at the end, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not part of my narrative, Cubby. <laughs> We will, we will come back to that. I want to give Bradley props because that's actually crazy. The fact that Gomsu had to come in for that last bit of damage, taking some turret shots. I mean, Bradley might have been able to outplay it, but it was such a tough position. I do want to revisit. I mean, the difference that we had in this game was the mid lane matchup with Hunter Thieves taking a little bit more priority. I think Jimmy and matching Harry there and, and the fact that that bot lane play was a one for one. It is at least the adaptation from 100 Thieves, the fact that, hey, we feel like we have to contest a little bit more early. Yeah. And we still think that the Orn and Jinx in the later stages of the game can be enough for us to overcome this explosive mid-game from TL. And guess what? We're in that mid-game. And it's still Rift Herald on Armeo. Really curious to see where he drops this one. And Harry, 
I'm looking at that port because I think once he gets this, him and Armeo are going to sync up. And you got to believe with Gamsu missing Flash and Alt in the top lane, he has to be the target. That has to be the path that Team Liquid starts to break this game open. Yeah, I mean, last time the, we saw that Team Liquid went bottom lane with it, right? They gave a lot of money over to Yon. That's true. They, they didn't go towards the Bradley That's like true. we were initially expecting. And one of the things that we can often see is when we start building up these long lanes, it gives a lot of freedom to TF. Oh, but this is a nice counter maneuver from Jimmy and already getting prepped against Team Liquid in case they wanted to overextend. They can't dive, but Bradley is missing Flash. It was a Flash for Flash trade, and it is easier to punish a Jace compared to an Orn. So uh -oh. it can be. He is canceling that recall. Jimmy is not going to be able to hover, okay. and it is going to be a Herald drop mid. So just trying to take some points away from the rise. And this is just in time for the Dragon to be spawning. Nice. Oh, but the patience from Kenby taking one out of Armeo's huh. books finds the overextended Bradley, and they'll be able to get the kill over to Kenvy. I really like how Bradley recognizes. Oh, yep, hold on, I'm bot, bot, bot. Oh, but Wixie now finds himself overextended. He still has Flash, but I don't think he's getting out of this one. The Dragon will be a great prize to pick up after taking down Wixie. Yeah, Busio went to hover mid because of the Herald crash, but it was the quick play bot as Harry and Team Liquid again cheat tempo. They find what I would argue is the better play on the bot side as John is the benefactor. He picks up the points, and Team Liquid will get their second track. And putting themselves to Dragons to Soul is another clock that Team Liquid weren't really playing to last time. They eventually were on three Dragons, but Busio is trying to contest. Uh, Kenby is trying to get in there. Sonic Wave. Oh, oh Kenby steals it. Tempered Fate is going to still solve it out, but Armeo is gone. And now it's just only Yawn and Ayla. They have the wall terrain scaling ability, but will they follow it up? Realm Morp is coming in from Harry, and the rest of the members are Jimmy and I should say 100 Thieves Academy. Trying to push oh. on forward, finds the Sonic Wave. Does Kenby take it? He's thinking about it. He's gonna, he's gonna back off on that one. Yeah, you almost baiting him. He's like, I got Ayla in my back pocket. We can hit this done. We can turn it around. Can be a little bit wiser to it. But hey, 100 Thieves again. Huh? Big theme of this game was them taking the rise instead of the victor, trying to have a little bit more playmaking early, a little bit more early priority. And they're at least going punch for punch. Remember last game, they weren't able to find any positive plays for themselves until the 25 minute mark. This time, they're at least trying to match, and they are cutting into that gold lead a little bit. Yeah, and but one of the big players that is actually going to be able to play this game is Wixie, right? He only went down the one time. His lane opponent doesn't have four kills like they did the first time, and Wixie plays defensively later on in the game brilliantly. He's got Kemby, he's got Gomsu to serve as his front line. Also, the first turret has yet to be broken by Team Liquid. I, I mean, again, the rate that this team takes first three turrets, it's 11 out of the 12 games they've played in PG. Under Thieves, again, cutting into that by, uh, you know, finding these skirmishes. They're not enabling Team Liquid to just play this raw map play that has really put them over the top and made them the final boss that we have in this tournament. I say that for two does fall. <laughs> well, it, on. you know what? It, it was close. It was close. It, curse, it happens. But I think the point still stands. The fact that it took this long to get the first turret down. This is not the same explosive start that Team Liquid have found themselves. Team, team 100 Thieves only find themselves 2,000 gold down. Hold on, look top. They, oh, this could be, Harry doesn't have boy. port yet, but Team Liquid do have members. They should take this Rift Herald. Gamsu empowered TPs are available. There is a deep ward. You can see 100 Thieves. I like this from them. Instead of choosing to contest, they're gonna base, try and get out on the map first, and then make a response play by deploying first after this. Yeah, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is League of Legends is kind of a turn-based game, right? Team Liquid have been so good at using their turns over the past entire season, but this is a situation where 100 Thieves, by sacrificing that, will be out in force in a second, where Team Liquid, they have to recall Bradley and Gomsu can try and look for a play top lane and maybe turn around with a deep play. Uh, Jimmy and Nkemi Kemi got to be careful about defending this one. It is just two versus potentially three, but the recall is coming out from Ayla and our male spell that this turret should be protected. And for the rest of 100 Thieves, when we look back to game one, this time around, it was Team Liquid, six kills to zero, almost a 5,000 gold lead. This time around, 100 Thieves are doing a better job of holding on, and this game seems much more realistic to be able to come back from. I think it's also really important that Kenby stole that dragon. I, you think of how TL wants to play, the fact they do still hit that Rui oh. uh, or mid-game spike, but we got a pause. Okay, waiting out, potentially a flash from Armeo before, looking for the dragons where he still has yeah. it available. He just gets the Heartbreaker out. I love the spawn mechanics, though, from Kenvy. I, he is so elite mechanically, especially at this academy level. The fact that he insta Q ward hops, get, gets the Gore Drinker proc in, tries to get all the damage for the execute. I know it's something that's really small, but also something that we're looking for in these players to 
push them to the next level. We know that Kenby has the ability to do so, even the little things on this Lee Sin, so good. And the other thing I really love is the things he didn't do. He didn't kick, he has no flash. There's no way he's gonna get Armea. As long as Armea is playing reasonably well, he will be able to respond with the unstoppable ultimate. And Hunter Thieves, you know, with them not fully committing to the play, as you pointed out, Joshi, it does open up Jimmy in to free hit that turret and try and respond to Team Liquid's bot turret take. But Team Liquid, again, trying to push the pace of the game. Kelly is dropped. Heartbreaker does have a short cooldown, but it's still a window where 100 Thieves, if they find Team Liquid slightly overextended for the next 30, 45 seconds, you can look for our mail or at least play on the flash cooldown since that would be his only escape next time. And this is a much more manageable deficit for 100 Thieves. Again, Jinx Orn, we've seen them utilize this combo to scale later and win those later skirmishes. At this point of the game last time, they were down four to 6K gold. Yep. Uh, this is one where, yes, they are down. Yes, I would still say the advantage is in Team Liquid's pockets, you know, given the gold advantage they have, given when their champions spike, but it is more manageable. And this is the big point of the game, you guys. This is when Team Liquid and 100 Thieves will likely determine the winner. If Team Liquid can blow up, open this fight with the Dragon, they should be strong enough to actually take it. I like the fact you bring that up, Joshi, because if I'm 100 Thieves, I think I think about dropping this Dragon. I think, uh, yeah. You just don't give them the opportunity, right? If you think that if this is our chance to lose the game, you just don't take it. You know you're scaling better, and if Team Liquid gets a small advantage, it's way better than losing. And, I mean, look at the spikes that Team Liquid has. If I could draw on the screen, I'd point out that Rapid Fire Cannon and Stopwatch for Harry. If I see that as Hunter Thieves, this is one of the stronger points of the game for a Twisted Fate. I would think twice before I walk up, face check this Dragon, and look at all the control Team Liquid has. Really clean setup from them. Yeah, so on the flank, though, this... Now, you said that 100 Thieves, it would be in their best interest to give up the fight, but they're posturing in such a dangerous way, they're actually arcing over no, to the not. left. Yeah, they're going to be going topside. They do not want to take the spike. Yeah, Good spotted. call, Cubby. I mean, they are spotted out, but hey, this is still a situation where because they are first to the move, this turret should, should go down before Team Liquid And again, if spotted. I'm 100 Thieves and I have this comp, what is my arc of the game? I get stronger the later things go compared to Team Liquid. So trade out for gold now. Make it so that you aren't down as much gold when you want to take the yeah. fights at the 25 or 30 minute mark. You're okay dropping this dragon. It's not even soul point, thanks to the steal from Kenny. Oh, no. oh, oh. big engage though from Busio. Can they punish oh. it? Whoa, Gomsu with the call of the Forge God. That's gonna force multiple flashes out. Okay. Temper Faith is going to put Yon in gold, but Kenby will find the kill onto Yon. And now 100 Thieves in that move towards the top side of the map also get a punish. I gotta say, Gomsu made that magical journey a little bit dicey. The Ornhorn coming through, stopping that. They weren't able to finish the ride. That wasn't a ride that Team Liquid wanted to be on. And now 100 Thieves, they're still the ones making plays. They have the five stack mid. Gonna try and take this mid outer turret. And they've beaten Team Liquid to the first three. 11 out of the 12 games. Team Liquid has gotten the first three turrets. Not this game. It's 100 Thieves as this rise pick, the priority that they wanted early, it's paying off. And someone thing that we're going to have to pay attention to, right? We often look at how these players are playing up. The Oceanic players are playing so well together. They are birds of a feather, but Armeo isn't here for the play. Oh, yeah. And they know that because you get the indicator when Dragon's taken. So I love Busio, our rookie, seeing that going in as a support, someone that we praise for having good hands. And what we want to see out of him for growth continues to be in the right spot at the right time and find those engages. Really good moment from him and 100 Thieves as they bite into Team Liquid's gold lead a little bit more and this is a much closer game too. Yeah, I would even say that 100 Thieves are winning at this point, right? Off of that play, you've put a huge stop to Team Liquid. Now it's not over. There's still plenty of times for Team Liquid to try and blow it open, but from this position, I prefer red side every time. The ornament upgrades are going to be coming in. It's going to give them the gold increase. And it will, stats, yeah. but they have to get there. And that's where Team Liquid is so good. That's where they've made yeah. their money throughout the season. They still have the tools with Harry on this Twisted Fate, with Bradley on this Jace. They can still get more gold and utilize the mid-game spike they have to punish the Thieves. We'll see if Team Liquid can pull it together and make a play off these ports from Harry. I think that's really what I'm looking out for at the moment. Yeah. But this is where we start getting into a discussion that we had yesterday about Golden Guardians versus 100 Thieves. You gotta ask the question, which composition is easier to play? And you have base checker yeah. on 100 Thieves. You have the Orn, you have the Tom Kench, whereas Team Liquid, you have a lot of ways to get over terrain. And so people who would normally not be able to, like the Bard because he's so squishy, can just leave. And that's a big reason why I'm liking with the red side. When you look at how well 100 Thieves are able to defend the game in game one, even down 10,000 gold, now you're looking to stay where they're only down 2,000 gold. As we go back to what you were saying, Cubby, earlier, that this gold deficit is far more manageable. The fact that they're making moves like this to stop the bleeding and to stall out the game as long as possible, they're giving themselves their best chances to compete against Team Liquid the later the game goes. 
And 400 Thieves, I I think the way they're going about it too, I, I mean, Wixie Busio this time around surviving the bot lane onslaught again, this is a mismatch. Uh, we heard it from Diamond on the desk, Yawn Ewa. Ewa's uh, the, may, might be the best prospect that we have in Academy. Yawn has shown great improvement in his second year as well. The fact these rookies were able to survive and now get to the later stages of the game where you have a Jinx Tom catch, that's oh. a good sign, but Ewa, Okay, Tempered he's Fate on to two. Busio, Kenny, oh. Kenny, oh, nice, beautiful double flash from Kemi and Gomsu. Harry and I'm gonna turn flash. around onto Harry and Ayla. The distance, watch from Yon onto the left side, but he can't really he's get split. in and put the damage down. The rest of the team, look at their split by that choke, and 100 Thieves Academy picked them off. Once again, we're seeing Team Liquid not as 500 Thieves. We said they were so good at team fights. And if there was one weakness from Team Liquid, this explosive mid game, sometimes they go too fast. I think that's an example of Harry being on the wrong side of the wall. Really good on 100 Thieves to isolate, oh, take him down as they're realm warping as a squad to Baron. Oh. This. this is bold. They this still have bold. Bradley. Bradley has a lot of damage. Yon can kite around Very them. Risky. They're forcing the fight. They want Team Liquid to fight four against five where they know they'll have an advantage. Everfrost Root on to Yon. Oh. They got the Marchman and now 100 Thieves. They have a massive damage advantage over Harmail. You're going to have to be a hero and look to see if you can get into the pit. But it's 3,000, 2,000 HP. Harmail has Heartbreaker. He doesn't see it. He goes, oh! Oh! Our Mayo still manages to steal the Baron away from 100 Thieves! And that is massive as Harry, he TP'd in, he's in the fight! And all over, they're still going! Team Liquid now have to fight their way out of this one. Bradley, beautiful thundering blow, oh, puts no. Kempi back, and 100 Thieves, they thought they had the advantage, they thought they had the play, but it's still Team Liquid that Hold is on. fighting back. Gomsu with the Ornegade once again, Hold what on. the hell is going on? This is all out bloodbath! The, the lockdown from the Ryze and Everfrost up. Kenby got the combo. We got the execute. Now Kenby, Bradley split. Whoa! Bradley trying to flash forward. Oh, oh and he yeah. trains it up. Kenby, this game is awesome. This game is awesome. I love it. Every single person is having their opportunities to pop off. It is absolutely crazy how well these two junglers are matching up. Our Mayo gets the steal this time. I want to credit 100 Thieves locking down y'all like that. That's big, but they don't have tools to keep our Mayo off the pit. So it's a 50 50 in our Mayo. He wins it. And as we go back into the rest of the fight, as they start hiding towards the top side, it becomes total chaos. There's no ultimates, there's no tools. Harry, again, a little bit too far. Oh, and he goes in with a blue card. Unfortunately, not having the stun, his team can't catch up and he goes down. But because of oh, all the rage, it's live. absolutely crazy. Get us to live, man. We got more action. Oh, we got third dragon on Let's the line. Go. Oh, this is the fourth dragon on the line. This would put team, look at that soul point. They managed. Oh, champion. Whoa, none of the junglers were there. It was a 50 50 all right now. Harry has gold card available. Teleport is coming in, but 100 Thieves, they got they came for and the choppers from Wixie it stops team liquid in their tracks and hunter thieves they pick up the dragon so even with that baron steal we have to revisit our original scaling conversation we like hunter thieves as this game goes on the baron was pretty much negated with that big team fight after where team liquid was pushing and we're just five minutes later into the game with an extra dragon on hunter thieves the same gold deficit i still like where the thieves are at in this game as the thieves continue going later and later we can't forget how well this composition is going to be scaling with the players I'm going to be looking at to do it, right? Jimian has had such a huge yeah. globe over the course of this split. We always liked his ability to play sidelines. He doesn't get caught out. He's only in odd places when he knows the entire team can collapse. We saw it yesterday. We might see it again today. And his ability not only to improve as an individual, but also work with Kenby. Playing off the rise Everfrost, also the empowered route. That's why Hunter Thieves won that skirmish in the top side. Big for them, but hey, at the moment, Team Liquid, they're the ones that have the Baron buff, at least on Ayla. They have the fast track top, and that's another objective going over to them. Yeah, making use of it despite what seems like a glimmer of hope for 100 Thieves. They're still in a Wait, not bad position, it. but this okay. Baron buff is getting used to the fullest. Team Liquid covering all of their side flanks as well. It seems it seems difficult the for range. 100 Thieves to be able to flank him from the side. Gonsu can walk up and throw out a call of the Forge God, but how can they get into the back lane if there's no side lane flank? And the cannons are just going to slowly take this down. We always know that Jinx has a lot of range, but when you have so many supers crashing, it might be difficult. That is the end of the Baron power play for Team Liquid, so we'll see if they stick around for the inhibitor. This is dangerous, fighting in front to back against Orn and Kenby. He's now looking for the angle. Okay, Whoa. call the Forge God coming out. Who does it hit up? It is Bradley. Remember, no flash available. Kenby wants to go for oh, the no. kick, but he gets stunned up. So Jimmy the kick in. just punts Bradley away to safety. And now Team Liquid Jimmy looking in. for the re-engage. Heartbreaker onto Jimmy and he's trying to double oh. back into the back. But a double fade is huge. Can they line up the Cosmic Binding? The stun doesn't quite hit. Harry flashing forward, trying to get the kill down. Exhaust onto the back line of Wixie. They're Wixie still that. fighting over, but Wixie gets out alive. Oh, Can yeah. Yon survive? Realm War coming up, but Jimmy in with the, the stasis. Tries to hold on, but Yon is undeterred, and he's still firing back on 100 Thieves, but it is so hard to take down Gomsu. How is this 
game so crazy. It is absolutely crazy watching these two teams go head to head. And at the end of it, I love how both teams are so hesitant to actually go through the choke point, but it is Kenby, the one who breaks it. Gamsu goes through, they find Armeo at the very beginning and both teams looking to reset. I think that's a big key for 100 Thieves. The fact they're finding Armeo early in these fights, if Diego gets resets, that's how TL can run the fight from there. The fact that they're taking him down <sighs> first. That's, well, that was bold. I mean, he had to jump after. We're, we're, we're good. Uh, but it was just one Q, man. <laughs> that can be absolutely huge at this point. But yeah, finding Armeo, like you said, is a huge part of this game because they're just trying to get the resets. And now we're two minutes away from the Dragon again. 100 Thieves. These skirmishes, I mean, this game has been a bloodbath. But every fight that goes even, I favor the team that's stronger later into the game. And these skirmishes being the one for ones, the two for twos, it stalled us out to the point where look at the items over on 100 Thieves. They have the ornaments coming in. We almost have Wixie at an Infinity Edge. Once he hits that, I really favor them for the rest of the game. We said game two were bangers, man. We yeah. said they were gonna I'm be I'm telling good. you, man. I mean, this is a banger, but like the game two types of bangers that we've had have been like next level. I, yeah. like, we're not quite at the next level. It's been a good one. We I, gotta get to the next uh, level. That's a caster curse waiting to happen. I, I'm calling it right now. Are you ready for double pentacles in this next team fight? These guys are gonna go <laughs> absolutely insane, but Team Liquid, they're here first, but they're here a little oh, early. Oh, hold up now, Josh. You can't reveal too many script secrets right now. I do wanna point out, Black Cleaver actually competed on Yawn. Uh, we were talking about Wixie's items, uh, trying to get the IE in time. Cleaver's really good this game yeah. for Yawn. Uh, shredding through the Orn, the Rise, who both have the Frozen Hearts, that big front line, 400 Thieves. That is something where, you know, we keep on talking about the scaling, the range of the Jinx, the power for the Rise to lock people down. But if Yawn is not touched in a team fight, you can scale with the Zeri, keep on shredding the armor on 100 Thieves, and run away with it. That's something we haven't really touched on just quite yet, is just, you know, there's a general consensus that 100 Thieves have a pretty easy front to back to execute later, but one of the things about Team Liquid is they fight super slowly. They don't have a lot of target bursting, especially up against Kenby and Gomsu. They can't really kill them fast enough. Uh, do they want to look for this pick? Oh, Bradley no getting knocked up. He's got flash. He's still got flash available. Gets reared up. Super Mega Death Rock gets a lot of damage down. Tempor he can't move! He can't move! The chain CC was so damn good from 100 Thieves. Yeah, it locks him out. Yawn is still pressing forward. Getting the Gale Force out of Wixie. He is moving and he's pressing Look, forward. Yawn. Long range gold card into Jimmy. So Cleanse fast. is down. Yawn. And Yawn, Yawn is just pressing forward. He is an absolute machine. But 100 Thieves oh, have Jimmy to be ahead. careful. They're getting peppered back right now. They're Lock being Yawn. pressed forward. Team Liquid forcing them away from the Dragon. It is still a 5v4, but Yawn, uh, maybe they're able to He's wait done. out the it's ultimate. Over. Okay, no more ult. That means he can't keep on picking up the moves. We will see if 100 Thieves utilize this to try and turn the tides of this skirmish. They do have the man advantage. Abusio, it would have to be an Abyssal Dive. Kenby still has Dragon's Rage. He doesn't have Flash, though, so it would be a war top. top. He's looking for the Dragon. It's been aggroed oh, right now. Ayla has been rooted off by Jumian. Gold card on to Gomsu. It's just skill shots back and forth. 1,500. Kenby secures it. That's Huge knockup on Darmail, but can they come up? But Yawn is Ford the pot in the crossfire teleports coming in but can they collect 100 thieves i don't know what it is about game two to be able to come back but 100 thieves have found the momentum to push forward and the scaling from the thieves their ability to stall out that fight wait for the double horn horn from gamsu that's the big difference as they get the man advantage first they turn it in the back half that's the third dragon soul point going over to them and they're not done they want the baron they're going to be able to pick this up by huge swings coming through in this game they're going to be the first ones out on the map jace is no longer going to be able to easily win all these side lane plays and as we continue to go for these fights there's no way that they can clear it and guys when we came in on the caster decks. We were favoring TLA. We were talking 3-0, 3-1, but this game two from the Thieves, we have a Sears in our hands. <laughs> we don't you even have the, the in our hands. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could get the camera back on us, but, but for, for now, I want to go back to the stakes of this series as we're just looking back through the last moments of that replay. Talking to Wixie before the series, he was talking about, man, Playing on stage has really helped calm the nerves around. When it was the first day against Immortals Academy, it was rough. All the cameras, all the lights, being in that crowd, knowing how loud the voices can get in that arena. But then through the Immortal series, through the Golden Guardian series, they have warmed up. And that game one, it looked freaking rough against Team Liquid, but they have clearly bounced back. And we heard him on Twitter yesterday. He was saying, the stage feels like home. When you get a 3-0, when it's not really close, you are not going to have any of these nerves. And this just fits the story of Hunter Thieves Academy. 
them scaling into the split. The more reps they get on stage, the more comfortable these rookies, these veterans get too. And keep on Gamsu, he's coming back to League of Legends after Overwatch, man. He's made two finals in PG since he's rejoined. It really feels like this team getting more and more at home. And we'll see if our final boss, Team Liquid, I mean, this game's not over yet, but it's certainly gonna be a difficult road for them, but they are our top dogs for a reason. They did win that winner's final to make it to grand finals early for a reason. They said they can show some of that as this would be a crazy game to come back from the game two. they has been nothing but crazy this week. Look how much damage both AD carries are taking as they're lining up to Siege. Jan knows he cannot let Wixie ever get in range of these turrets. He's willing to lose a lot of his HP because he's got the red buff to heal it up. The 100 Thieves have a whole wave. Jimian is also lurking around on the right Spot. flank here. Has Realm Warp available if he wants to cut anyone off, but this turret has been successfully oh. picked up. 100 Thieves, another step forward. And just look at the AoE damage. Uh, from Wixie. I mean, even just hitting the minions, or I should say from Yawn onto Wixie, even just hitting the minions got him back down to half. Now he does have a vamp staff there to try and keep this siege going. We'll be back up the full. We'll see how hard 100 Thieves want to push around this. Oh, Ravi, he's got no flash. Okay, trying to punish Kenvi. Can he get the kick down? But it gets rooted up, stays alive thanks to a clutch block and shield, oh. but he still goes down. And now Team Liquid, can they punish onto 100 Thieves? It's been overextended. Yawn is revving up. He's got burst fire at max stacks right now. Armel still on the left side, trying Whoa, to look for the, the flank flash. heartbreaker, but Quixie with the flash, Abel's dodges out of the damage, but Yon flashing forward! Takes out the back from 100 Thieves Academy, but it's still Jimmy and Gomsu and low health bars from Team Liquid. They don't have anybody who can do these face checks. They can't walk into any of the bushes. You see that Ormeo is sacrificing himself to get the vision necessary to find Yon another kill. But importantly, Jimmy and Gomsu are still alive. They still have the Baron. I want to credit Wixie a lot. That kill force and the flash to dodge out on Armeo. That's what saves the fight for 100 Thieves Academy. If Armeo gets that reset, he is able to run, train on 100. That is a huge comeback for TL. It's still a good positive skirmish for them, but Wixie saved that from being disastrous. Let's take a look at this replay once again. It is them trying to find Bradley. They've done this before. They've had the full crowd control chain, but this time they split up and as Kenby goes down, it's all about how much damage Yon can get. They can't get on top of him. They have no way to lock down this Zeri. And as he's able to get all this ramp up, all the AOE damage to come through, as you said, Wixie keeps himself alive and forces Yon to come in. And you can see Yon was feeling it. I mean, him going in there, he thought he had the rest of the fight. Uh, Jimmy and hold strong though able to lock him down, able to prevent that Zeri from skating all over the rest of it. And we're back at another dragon fight. It is Mountain Soul on the table, 400 Thieves Academy. I, I, again, I think TL, they need to land poke, need to try and find an angle and play off these gold cards. There's some teleport angles available for Gomsu if he wants to make the long There's stretch a real across. Deep one. A real they deep one. Wave too. Jimian also has teleport available alongside. Depending if they let Team Liquid go first, they could go for a flank around. Yeah, you do not want to let Team Liquid just sit here and poke it out. Expect Gomsu to go for an ult very soon, as soon as he thinks Team Liquid are too grouped up. Root forward. Take this moment to breathe. Let the game go. Can be looking for Yawn, oh. but that kick doesn't send Yawn into the team. And so 100 Thieves burned quite the amount of resources for it. And now okay. the rain gauge, tempered fate. It's only on the Gomsu. Can they burn down this tank? It's a little too tough. Team Liquid and 100 Thieves just throwing shot after shot against each other, but no one falls. Well played by Team Liquid. I, I, they get the dragon for free. There's no way 100 Thieves can continue as the E from Busio. It was clutch. It does save a member. But that means that that dragon is eaten up by Team Liquid Academy. Both teams now at Soul Point. And I feel like the longer this game goes, the more I have to watch how Ayla has been playing. He was so good in our first game. Now, again, an Oceanic Star coming through, praised by so many of his peers, is able to start to find a lot of these windows in order to try and create these uh, big engages. And we said he needed to do it last game. He needs to do it again today. I mean, not only that, but how good has Yawn been? I mean, it, it seems weird because he's sitting at one, four, and six, but if there is no Queen engage from 100 Thieves Academy to get onto the Seri, there's no way that they can deal with it later in the fight. As we take a moment to step back, I want to remind and kind of bring back what the stakes would be, what would the implications of a, a, series, a game win from 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid. If 100 Thieves win, they reset the momentum, they're back to square back one, three. and it's a best of three at that point. But if Team Liquid win after what was such a grueling back and forth game, 
I don't know how 100 Thieves would be able to recover in terms of momentum. And I talked to Busio yesterday at the end of the day. He's like, would you prefer being in the games? Would you actually prefer to have some time off? Busio is like, this is fun. I want to keep doing this. I think that the momentum that we have going to the series is really paying off. And the resiliency that we're seeing from 100 Thieves so far in this game too is a testament to that. I mean, the resiliency from 100 Thieves, what about Team Liquid? Yeah. I, this is a combo we thought they would get outscaled. Uh, and the way they've been maneuvering these fights, they've made it so difficult for the Thieves. Hey. And they're going to start up the Baron, try and bring Watch Team the Liquid horn. to them. Yeah, 100 Thieves, they don't want to take the 50-50, but that Temper Fade prevents the follow-up from the call of the four oh, card, and now they have to be the ones on the run. Can be taking a lot of damage thanks to that gold card setup. It's chunked about an eighth of his HP. Has to be careful about the re-entry. Huge tempered fate from AOL, but also I love how slow TL is playing out these fights, just playing off the gold card, off the empowered shock blast, that upfront damage that they can land when the gold card connects. 100 Thieves at the moment, they don't really have a way to deal with it. The long range that Team Liquid have been demonstrating. You think about Orn Jinx combos being one of the most effective long range compositions in the game. Rapid Fire Cannon and Power Gold card keeps someone at bay and prevents them from being able to oh. follow up and engage. But 100 Thieves are going to make a round for it once again. This isn't spotted. I, they snuck in. The crab's down. They, no one's shown on this war. Team Liquid has oh, no idea Busio. what's going on. Okay, Busio is lingering around, but Team Liquid don't have perfect information quite yet. They might have a suspicion, but it's burning down fast. Okay, 4,000 HP. Ayla doesn't it's have... Gone. Oh, Temper Fate is available, but it doesn't Rumble come in time. Too. Wixie is able to secure it. Temper Fate okay. might look up for two, and now 100 Thieves. Do they want to save these two members, or do they just want to let them die? Gomsu has Flash, gets out over the wall, but Team Liquid, are they going to try to run them down here? That's huge. You trade that every time if only the support falls, but these recoil <gasps> Jimmy in. Oh, Wixie got out alongside Kenby. Gomsu might give his life, but they turn around. That's a lot of damage from Jimmy in. Mega 10th rocket from downtown. There's gets both some down to our Look mail as Jimmy well. In. And now Gomsu with the call of the Force Gone. They found Yon potentially, but Harry is there to screen 100 Thieves, protecting his marksman. Takes up so long to grind down Gomsu and Jimmy, and there's nothing that Yon and Harry can currently do. I love the fact that they were able to sneak in. It was a great Baron sneak, because Armeo, Harry couldn't do anything. There was no destiny gate for Harry to know what was happening. The damage from Jimmy is filthy on this rise. I, look at that build. You have a stone plate, Thimble Winter, Frozen Heart. Never dies. He's still one-shotting people with the help of some CC from his friends and Jimmy and Gamsu, they've been the two members that have really leveled up for this team. They hold strong in the 4v5 up top. They make sure that 100 Thieves gets to keep that Baron on four, and now they're on the siege. And it's enough time to actually take out the inhibitor turret and the inhibitor as well. 100 Thieves, you get flashbacks to yesterday's series against Golden Guardians, where nice. off of the Baron push, they've opened up the base. The Realm War gets them out. The momentum is insane. And this time around, Busio, he will be here for this siege, and I love front to back comps, sieging inside lanes, because there's only one way to flank. It's so tough to play around the Ornhorn. Horn. Is they're gonna try? Call the Force God, traded for Tempered Fate. Inhibitor Tower might go down. Can be looking oh, for no, another kick, but it gets stunned up no, by Team Liquid once again. Has the GA, he's gonna get resurrected, and Busio's still there if he needs to devour him. Gold card is gonna come out, but Busio Where's Harry? prevents it from port. coming out. Harry? Where's he go? Looking for it, he has the destiny. Doesn't pop it. Doesn't pop it. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things uh, I feel we always like. Oh, Yon! Yon, Yon going forward! The flash Watch immediately, flash. the dodging out on the root. Armeo still on the left side flank, getting chunked down. 100 Thieves! They see low hedge for our members, oh. and Wixie has flashed forward. He's got the health as well. He wants to TP. push for it. He wants to oh, bring no. the series back. Bradley and J Harry getting caught out. Oh, man, 100 Thieves! If they take off this inhibitor, what can they get after? Yon still has the ult running, so they gotta be really careful. He's so fast. Yon is still prepping forward. Can be forced to flash here. He wants to turn this game around. He's got a lot of damage. Temper Fate comes up once again. Can they follow it up? The knockoff is there on the Yon, but he still oh, lives. Thanks oh, to the hey. Temper Fate from oh. Yalo. Oh, Yon's still alive. We said we gotta watch this guy. He is the Zeri player. Even though his score doesn't reflect it, his ability to kite around these fights has been second to none, but it doesn't matter. The Mountain Soul goes to 100 Thieves. They live through the game, but things just got that much harder with Mountain Soul going over to the Thieves. There are ways for TL to shred through the bonus shield, the bonus armor, and hey, Zeri does get a buff whenever you hit someone with the Mountain Soul shield. Not all gloom and doom, but still so difficult. But how close has this game to been? It's living up to our expectations. We're running into one of the things that Zeri runs into though, right? Because her damage is so split, it's 60-40 physical magic. 
you can't itemize great tools to punch through all the resists that are here. You rely so much on your base damages, and with the extra HP the Gamsu has, they can't do much about it. And not only that, it's level 18 Jinx, almost full build. I mean, this has been year after year in League of Legends. Uh, we see Jinx sometimes, sometimes we don't. But if you get Jinx to level 18 with this build, we know what this champion can do. Rockets at full, max range, lethal tempo stacked up. Wixie gets to play at the best part of this Jinx arc in a game two, where we talked about between- Wixie's now the main character. Yes, Wixie has usurped the throne in that instance. And for 100 Thieves, we talked about before, Golden Guardians and the Immortal series, the game two always delivers. Have we reached that super banger status, yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah we're 42 here. I told you. Uh, it's still only a thousand gold lead, 400 Eight. thieves, but all the stories coming through are now coming here in Armeo. He's hovering. Jimin doesn't get picked. Yeah, they're they're sneaking here. Oh, oh here Harry with the gold card, walking down Jimmy and shock blast from downtown. But Jimmy is actually so damn tanky that he's able to get out. And Kenby's just here to make sure that no one can look for the pick afterwards. I think it's a respectable attempt by Team Liquid. Again, this game got so much harder. Sinking up your solo lanes, jungler is trying to get a pick on the side. That's the right arm to go for. But he is way too damn tanky. Not to mention Gamsu. That's a big orn. That's a big aura. I feel like we've seen this before, though, right? Whenever Ooh. Jimmy gets attacked on the sidelines, he's never going to be going down. We often see him just kite out. He's using the LeBlanc to make sure that nobody can catch him. But this time, you can't catch him at all because he's not going to die. Something else I like from that attempt from Team Liquid, they do burn a couple ultimates, but it's they will be up in time for the Baron. Yeah, Baron, for nothing. Yeah, Baron's up in a minute. This is the next objective both these teams will be focusing on. A lot of wards littered for Team Liquid around this area, but 100 Thieves, they're the stronger team at the moment. They're the ones with control. And honestly, they're not even walking towards this Baron. They're not even trying to set it up. They just want the game. Oh, okay. Now, now here we go. They, they want the wave. <laughs> yeah, I they want the wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't get too far out of ourselves. <laughs> but look at where Team Liquid are going, right? They still have Bradley on the far side. Our Mayo is not moving towards the Baron. I mean, they have lots of wards. They know as long as 100 Thieves aren't threatening to do that, they can try and end the game elsewhere. But there's the wave already coming top lane. Yeah, Rel warping in the cannon. And it, you just need one minion, right? To be able to yeah, let Wixie no just rip through the turrets. Bradley on the recall, as you pointed out. Where's the It's going to be late. The inhibitor is going to fall. And can Team Liquid even find a fight to punish 100 Thieves? But they're already on the way back into the jungle. I think they're going to let Bradley split. I mean, again, Team Liquid, they've been outscaled at this point. You're going up against Mountain Soul. You have to find a way to get back in this game. Bradley, I don't think he's going to be joining this fight. He's waiting to see if 100 Thieves shows on the Baron, waiting to see if they see enough members so that he can keep on pushing. It's a chess game, right? Yeah. You you see Gonsu was faking the recall. Bradley was waiting for the war. And now 100 Thieves are going to get full information that Bradley's still all looking for the split push. Harry has teleported to the back side. Oh my god, are we going to get a base race here? Our male, they no just way. have to stall the Baron. They have to stall the game. It doesn't matter who gets the Baron. He's 100 Thieves are going to get it, but it's a teleport back. Harry and Bradley, can they make oh, it happen? Gomsu's trying to clear the wave. They cleared it out. Oh my god, this is no way. This, here. this is not how it ends, right? Jimmy is he's able to obliterate Harry. Meanwhile, on the other side, they dealt with the base defense. 100 Thieves will save the game from ending, and now they have a three man advantage over them. It was the only way for Team Liquid to try and end, and they were so close. They don't stop the teleport from Gomsu. He gets back in time, and there is not enough damage to punch through both the Rise and the Orn. And now, 100 Thieves are cleaning up the you game. Yeah, from TL. They had no other option. They're still trying to get in there, but it's not enough. 100 Thieves, they take game two. Holy moly, guys. What a game two. I mean, we tried to preface it, you guys. Game two is a game. Yeah, 100 Thieves Academy, they, they always deliver. And now this resets the pace for both of these teams. We have a series. I mean, the way that 100 Thieves, again, changing up one pick, one decision in their draft, that, the level one, the ability for Kenvi and Jimian to play together, have that proactivity, that was the big difference in the early stages of the game, keeping them in the game, and then after that, what they did with uh, their scaling composition. So tough for Team Liquid. One of the things I really want to credit some players in that were Wixie and Bustio, right? Last game we saw, they tried to go for the dive onto Yon, got punished. If you don't give Yon those two kills, he's not able to skyrocket through the game. And that patience coming through from our rookie players is a huge mental reset, a lot of adaptation that I'm really excited to see if they can continue carrying it forward. Yeah, it just goes back to what uh, Michael was saying before the series, right? It's like, I really feel like having getting the practice on stage has helped level up that gameplay 
play and has gotten me comfortable. And something else that he wanted to make sure that the audience knew was that I don't want the audience to look back at our 513 second round Robin score and think, oh yeah, these guys, you know, they're they're rookies, they're not gonna get better. This is how you show that progression. I mean, I don't think they even had to show anything else, like like from you know, the comeback from the second round Robin, but we're in the grand finals, right? These guys are competitors. They want to go home with the trophy. I think the growth out of them has been great. The rookies had a nice game, but it's still superstar Kenby. I mean, he really was the one. You give Jimmy in the rise. He's the one setting up Kenby to make sure that the kills were going into his pockets. 100 Thieves were able to push that game forward. And 100 Thieves pushes to a game three. We saw the adaptation, adaptations that they made after they dropped game one. I'm really curious to see what kind of adaptations seem out at Team Liquid. Do they go for the salty run back? Do they completely throw a curveball at 100 Thieves? We'll have to see. And what changes? It's not going to be up to us, right? It's up to Team Liquid because they're the ones now that have to answer back. But we're heading back to the desk. Before we do that, though, we're going to hear from Team Liquid Academy's jungler, Armeo. So 100 and NTL are both bringing Academy teams back to like the finals of, of Proving Grounds. Um, I think both orgs are pretty like have pretty good focus on Academy, which makes sense. I think in our case, we have like a fairly similar similar roster, so it makes sense that we're performing well again, right? We just changed the top lane. Whereas like 100 obviously made a lot of changes and they're still doing well. So they obviously have a pretty like solid way of finding players and this type of thing over there. So I think it's, it's pretty cool. Welcome to another episode of On The Rain. Got some wild critters out there that need wrestling. Let's go ahead and get to it, shall we? Now what do we got here? We got Violet from Golden Guardians and Team Liquid's Yawn. What? Hold your horses now, fellas. We 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 gotta take it low and slow here on the range. There ain't no need for all this craziness now. Violet's just playing his darndest. My goodness, he's going into no way. Violet's gonna get him. No, how does that even happen? Now we find Yuji out here by himself, surrounded by a couple outlaws. We gotta see how this man gets out of this one. It's gonna be a hairy son of a gun. All right, Yuji's already got. He's already got Chad down. How does that even happen? And now he's going after Concept 2. There's no way he makes it out of this one. Oh my God. All right, Jimmy is gonna have a little bit of backup up here cause we got the goat Kenby to back him up. Let's see here. He's only since I was a bit of a deja vu, but he's already getting a kick in too. Oh my goodness, it's getting so hot in here. I can't even handle it. Now Gamsu finds himself in a little bit of predicament. I'm gonna try to lasso him real quick. Let's see if I can get him. Ugh. Oh, I missed. All right, all right, Kimby, Kimby, you gotta get him. Kimby, I know you can do it, Kimby. I swear, Jimmy, you're gonna get him. I know you can. I believe in you, Jimmy. You've gotta be able to get him. Darshan can't get out of this. He's still gonna make it. I can't believe it. Now, Chad, he's known to break some ankles every now and then, but he, he's looking mighty fine on this one. Let, let's see what FlyQuest can do to route this guy. We'll see him go in, but he's already told you everything. And then Chad's just dancing around with his finger guns in the air. I can't believe he even gets out after all that. What are you doing? All right, Dark Wings has gone and found himself some prey here out on the range. We'll see if we can take down old Philip in the bush while he backs. We'll see what Dark Wings can do, because he, he's already throwing the whole kitchen sink at him. God darn it. Dark Wings, you got to be careful, though, because Philip do butt, and he's going to go golden, but there ain't no golden day for you today, son, as Philip going to take you out. And that's a heck of a wrangling on On the Range. And what a day it was. My goodness. It is a hot one out here. But it has been a pleasure to wrangle these Proven Grounds players. We'll see you next time on The Range. Hello, hello, it is me, Magical, and I'm here with Diamond. We're at the Telestrator, and we're gonna go over some plays that happen. Diamond's gonna be taking most of the control here. I'm here with just the time settings, all that jazz. So Diamond, why don't you introduce this first play that we got? Uh, this is from actually game one, so it's kind of far from <laughs> the base race that we just had. But uh, <laughs> So basically what happened in this play is, uh, I think TL was really far ahead in this game compared to 100, and I was not satisfied with the way that uh, a TL play went ahead, and I think it kind of showed in the game two where they had like a three to four K kill lead. They couldn't close out the game, and this is like basic macro play in the game where they're just coming out of base and 100 actually messes up with their. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, cool. Oh, I was like waiting for your signal. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Play. So there's just a fight top lane. 
Jace is like just coming out. Oop, I click here, but So like basically, James goes to this both wave and uh, uh, Tia comes out of base, right? And here they have like two choices. They need to like break these two towers, like break top and mid tower, right? Mm -hmm. And the way they use this is they see like Jinx is solo pushing bot, like kind of race splitting, and the TK is just showing him mid because he's gonna show him mid in the next like couple seconds. I think they see him uh, here. They see him now. There you go. So here they push bot and they have full setup bot lane. Bot lane is fully empty and they know for sure. So like, can okay, look here. There's two people in, in base. Jinx needs to come back to base or needs to come back to base and. They have full control over their whole map now at this point. So yeah, so I mean, yeah, just looking at how the setup is, it's just really good setup. For yeah, the so play, Liquid, play so. it out and see how it goes. So um, I, I think that's actually the end of that one. So let me just double check. Yeah, I think that's the end of this one okay. to kind of show you the and but it shows you like where they have the advantage. Yeah, and from here, TL actually didn't uh, use the bullet wave to like get the two Tatars. They actually just did nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. so like this, the goal they had I think was like 5k at this point, around this, this could have snowballed into like 8k to like, like just any of the game basically. Yeah. So. All right. Oh yeah. If you click that one right there, oh, so you can kind of see it a little oh, yeah. bit better. Oh, that's better. So, yeah. so yeah, as you see right up there, got our lovely Jinx and Orn, but here in the mid lane, I, I think it's like you kind of talked about, right? Yeah, they basically showed too many mem members not really doing anything. So Tom Kench is not doing anything here. And the current base, two people in base, and they have free reign over bot side and running to top side. Basically, it's called this is called a double rotate. So they will switch their rise into mid, and they will switch their mid lane players into top and play for these two lanes, basically. Mm -hmm. But they just didn't end up for because they could break basically the whole all the outer towers doing this, but right. they didn't do anything. So that's I wasn't satisfied with it. Yeah, you weren't so, satisfied with it, but it still worked out for team. Yeah, I mean right? they still won, but they could have grew their leads like much bigger. Yeah, I agree. It's it's just more of like yeah, there we go. Click that and. If we look at the next play, it, I, I, I would say how Team Liquid tend to play is they get these advantages early into the game, but then they really do slow down the pace. Mm -hmm. Didn't really work out for them too well in that last game, that's for sure. And you kind of see the, the troubles that can have. Yeah. But we look at this next play, and this is that bot lane 2v2 fight that we had between them. Yeah, I feel like this is like really uncharacteristic mistake from Yon and Awa. I think they played this like, they were aware of like, because Rise is first move in this play, so you can move to bot first. Everybody but they still... There yeah. we go. So, so like, Ryze's first move here, so you can basically move to bot first, and they know about this, but they have TFLT, right? So they're willing to take a fight here, 2v2, because they, they think they're way stronger, and I think that's a really good play, because both junglers should not be like part of this play, like, both junglers are in base. Mm -hmm. So I like the way they're going for, but if you play it out, I think it ends up being kind of bad for them. So let's, uh, let's take of, a like, look just at it. Yeah, 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 let's look at this the play, exactly how it worked out. I yeah. mean, so here, it's a good start. Bark Q misses, and then... Zeri ult misses, and then <laughs> it's just like ends up being. I'm gonna miss. rewind it a bit yeah. just so you can kind of see that because it happened so fast. Yeah. Where it's like right here, so we kind of slow it up and go back. Yeah. So basically, we missed the timing barely by Bard. Where is it called? There we go. And then missed the Zeri ulti barely. <laughs> so like, oh, we're doing do damage here. So like, if all this damage, this is like at least like 400 damage they missed like from both of them. If this hits, like Zeri will have to like at least Jinx will have to die or flash out. And then, like, the fight is so much easier from here. And, like, maybe Tom Kitchen's flash out early as well. And this should be, like, mid pushing, but pushing, because their mid is losing from this right yeah. now. Rise is losing. So. Yeah, let's take a look at the mini map a little bit more, because yeah. just, just kind of looking at how you're talking about. Yeah, so, like, basically, Rise moved first, right? So, right. like, he's giving up on the next wave coming in. So, he's going to be losing this wave. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after this happens, the Lee Sin is coming out of base, and they have a bot push, right? So, mm -hmm. the bot lane will be out of, out of, the, map, out of the game, right. basically. They'll be low HP. So, like, after this happens, they can play for these two camps. Play for this, this mid pushing. They could get one or two plays here. Mm -hmm. So if this play does succeed for TL, it's like a huge like advantage for them. But right. ended up like kind of backfiring. I think like Armada does at the end, and like yep, it's yeah, it was really bad for the game. But this could have been like a huge snowball for TL. They just misplayed the game. Well, so I I remember even watching it like we were kind of just uh, talking about it and. The moment I saw that stuff miss, I'm like, oh, they should back out. It's over. And you, no. we saw how they were already positioning. Yeah. And my thought process was pretty much that. It's like, okay, you already missed like the initial part of the play. You might as well catch the waves so that way you're getting some advantages because yeah, yeah. you're not going to get much more. And like you talked about, eventually Armeo goes down. Yeah. So this play like ended up really backfiring for them. And I think like when you play a comp like TL's comp where you have to play off your tempo and play on two sidelines because you have JSTF and uh, Bard, if you fall behind in this type of skirmishes, then the game becomes really difficult. Yeah, and this is just the rest of the play, pretty much exactly as you're talking about yeah. it. Wasn't you know you get the Tom Kench and this <laughs> I love this. You were talking <laughs> about Diggleson this too. Him. It's uh, stealing the Tom Kench as Viego. You're like, you all right, I'm tanky. You no, feel you're too not. powerful. You feel like you're Malphite. You just have to Malphite ult in, but it never works. <laughs> if only you had that. But yeah, so that's just the plays that we get to see there. You kind of see the 
problems that would happen for some of the uh, times for Team Liquid where yeah. a play like that didn't really happen. Like, they uh, perfectly executed them in game one. Yeah. It looked great out of them. They were able to snowball those advantages. Sure, they slowed down the tempo a little bit too much for your liking, yeah. but they still got the win. In this game, they weren't able to get that same momentum, so when they got to a similar point where they tried to slow it down too much, 100 Thieves could take advantage of them, and it actually ended up paying dividends for 100 Thieves taking a, a game two banger. What is up with yep. game twos? I don't know, man. The game two is... Yeah, so... That's the flaws. Yeah, it just bangers all around, but I hear that we are allowed to leave our prison here. We're allowed to rejoin our... Lo here, don't on. tell me how to live my life! Come join us. Come join Don't us. tell me how to so live the big my thing life. I'm hearing, the big thing I'm hearing is that game one, Team Liquid got that early lead. Even if they didn't play it perfectly, thank you for joining us, of Cowboy. Of course. Got, got to come off the, off the range. Yeah, happy to have you on the, the range. range. Off the range. Even yeah. though in game one, Team Liquid, <laughs> they got the lead. They didn't play it perfectly, right? Like, there were still some ways that they could have pushed that lead more. They got that early lead. In game number two, they didn't have this massive gold lead that they're playing around with. Even though Armeo came in and steals the Baron, like, that was a really yeah, cool right. moment as well. Like, that was hype. I was like, oh, wait, is, is this going to be the 2-0? Is this where Team Liquid close it out? But the fact that 100 Thieves Academy still drafted for this late scaling team fight, and they got to that point in the game with relative comfort. I will say, when that Baron was stolen, I was allowed to say, I was thinking, this is exactly what 100 Thieves had done yesterday in their game, too, yep. <laughs> to get back in with that crazy play by Bustio, the Wombo combo. Like, oh my god, no way. All I'm saying, what is going on, man? <laughs> I, game two bangers! <laughs> in you have to grounds. do the whole oh, desk in that voice now. That yeah, 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 yeah. I vote, I vote for this, too. <laughs> uh, all, all those in favor, aye. Aye. <laughs> Diamond. I'll, I'll just thank I'll you, thank you. Two, two, oh, I, I think uh, Diamond's the voice of reason right now. He's giving us all the options. Seriously, I, I want to get your take on this, Diamond, because we got to see a huge bounce back from 100 Thieves in the second game. And it, it was very hard to come by for them, but yeah. after that first game, this is a heck of a comeback, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like they're, they actually didn't trip over themselves this time. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of the, actually, I think oh, uh, TL tripped over themselves more than mm. 100 did this time. So I feel like. That's the name of Academy kind of right now is like one team is like kind of ending, the other one is not. <laughs> <laughs> like the play that we're watching right there, it was a long play. Yeah, it was. Like chases from both sides is really like extended. Even, yeah, even after the match, like TL was actually ahead of it, and then they just all die. <laughs> and then like, See. And like they have a good fight, but oh, and then we all die. So like it's just a lot of like over, like just chasing the trivia result. And I really wish that we could hear from here because we're in the analyst desk area what, how 100 Thieves were because when they had that pop off the <laughs> comeback performance in game two yesterday, they were absolutely going nuts. We were freaking so, out uh, here. That's what I was during this say, moment. We, we were screaming ourselves. Literally <laughs> yelling our heads off because Armeo steals the Baron. And, and well, that's what happens when you have three play-by-plays play in a room. True. Yeah, yeah, they did put three play-by-plays with Diamond on the desk. So. Yeah. 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 All, the exactly. All the analysis. Exactly. All the analysis. So the big thing is now it's 1-1 on the scoreboard. It's not a sweep. I know Woo! that some people were saying three. Diamond, you you believed yeah, in the was, sweep. I thought it was gonna be a sweep personally. I mean, I, I still think it's it's not gonna be easy for 100 from from here. I think that that game I think was mostly off execution. So sure. Mm -hmm. If like 100 levels up and like keeps execu executing well, then I think they'll they have a good shot. But. Yeah. And, and a lot of the 100 Thieves Academy's strength has been their ability to make the late game team fight compositions work. Their team fighting has been fantastic throughout the lower bracket run, and we're seeing that also in this finals here. Team Look at Academy, they're, they were not as much known for like the full five stack, right? Like they just get leads and then they can, you know, play really well around the map, but they will go for things like the TF compositions, things that play mm -hmm. to multiple side lanes at one time. Yeah. Uh, and now it seems like 100 Thieves, if you watch most of those replays, all five champs are right on top of each other. Like, they're not moving around the map, they're it's moving together. Protect the jinx. You got an orn, you got a Tom Get down Dent. This Wixter president. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You cannot let Wixie die in that game. Fair, happy it takes a lot of, like, balls to, like, actually pull up a comp like this, like, pick, pick a TF comp in the playoffs. Because most, like, even for LCS teams, they, they will play, like, these type of, like, comps where it's, like, just ball comps, like, orn, like, Victor, and, like, just, like, running down as five and like fight the dragon and it's like, so much easier to play right mm -hmm. but these comps are actually really hard to play and like if you are good enough to play them it's really really good it yeah. is indeed as uh, i do i do believe we are getting we're ready getting ready for game for two but before game. before i gotta ask cowboy what? mazel uh i saw i noticed you were wearing flip-flops it's before. vacation is that come on that's it's cowboy it's, on vacation yeah i mean on the range is normally academy right. you know gotta keep the boots on but uh, you know when we're in proving grounds a little bit different i'm not from texas like you so i had to check in with the uh, the hey, official let, let's go ahead and get a, a big old yeehaw for Game number three. Yeehaw. 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 <laughs> <laughs>